contact tracing teams. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the families of those who have suffered and recovered and those who have suffered and died from this terrible pandemic. And I think it'd be appropriate if we could start with just a moment of silence, please. Very well. All right, sir. All right. The, my second one that I wanted to add to the agenda, uh, and these are my thoughts solely, and they're meant to be a starting point for further discussion. As members of the Durham County Board of Health, we share a common obligation to do what is in the best medical interest for the citizens of Durham County. My understanding is that a significant number of the citizens of Durham County are reluctant to take the soon to be released COVID-19 vaccine. And I hope that you will join me in a public display recorded for TV of our unity as the Durham County Board of Health as we collectively get vaccinated together. I can think of nothing that will send a stronger signal to the community uh, that the vaccine is safe, it's efficacious, and it needs to be taken as a total community effort. There'll be the obvious problems that we may all not be in the same vaccination group, but I'm sure that can be solved along with whatever else arises. This signal of our unity as the Board of Health will send an unmistakable symbol to the citizens of Durham County. So I'm asking us to let's find a way to make this happen sooner as opposed to later so that all so that we're in the forefront of this vaccination effort for Durham County. Thank you, sir. Um, this item in our, in our email exchange, we had discussed um, putting it on the agenda for maybe a January or February meeting. Would that be too late relative to <clears throat> what you're proposing um, to begin discussions around that? Because we can add it um, as one of the agenda items from February, but if needed be, I suppose we could have a special call meeting or something to discuss it in January if um, you thought that would be more prudent relative to time and um, relative to, to um, sending that message from the board. Uh, for me personally, I think the sooner we do it, the better off we're going to be. And I, this catches everybody by surprise, uh, except for uh, Mr. Dedrick and you. And uh, the uh, and, and so we need to let this settle. I'm going to send a copy of this in uh, to uh, Mrs. McLean so she can have it in the meeting, in the minutes of the meeting. But uh, I don't know if we could, I just feel like the sooner we do it, the better off we're going to be. And there's just been so, so much misinformation that's being put out there that so many people and for long history reasons have reservations about taking this vaccine that I, I just have this visual image in that all the board members are together in our big boardroom. Okay. We've got our sleeves rolled up and, and we're getting vaccinated together. Okay. And it's just, and, and whether the TV stations there, or we got someone from our staff recording it so that it can go to the TV. I just think it just sends an unmistakable image to the public. Very good. Any other comments real quick relative to the time frame as to when do we discuss this? Yeah, just, just real quick. I, I think that um, would be good to do, but you already mentioned the fact that we're gonna be in different groups in terms of timing um, for the vaccine would certainly have to be worked out. And we certainly exactly. don't wanna jump ahead of the line of folk that are in those more high risk groups. So that logistic is, is one that's gonna bear some um, some deep digging to figure that out. Okay. But other than that. Very good. Would you have anything to add, uh, Mr. Jenkins? I would. Um, uh, Dr. Jackson was uh, so nice enough to kind of make that strong point. Um, we do have the four phases of the rollout. And um, I know you did make the uh, mention of, you know, kind of having this um, on the February's Board of Health agenda. Um, it may be um, the perfect opportunity to revisit. Um, we do have phases 1A, which is really gonna take care of um, our frontline workers, healthcare 
ner doctors, nurses, um, everybody has to do with COVID care, along with our long-term care facilities. Everything is really contingent upon uh, vaccine supplies at present. And um, we just don't know what, you know, the, the supply chain is going to be like. But I totally um, get what uh, Dr. Rosenstein is doing. Um, our public health PIO has already signed me up to uh, roll up my sleeve and be supported <laughs> to do it, much to the chagrin of my wife. But nevertheless, uh, <laughs> we're certainly going to take one for the team. But um, I'm right with you. I'm right with you. I think this is a great opportunity if the board uh, so chooses. But uh, as Dr. Jackson said, we, we certainly want to make sure we do it at the opportune time. Very good. So it sounds like it might be um, an appropriate time at the February meeting to um, continue and maybe finalize this discussion. Um, given what the, the uh, rollout of the vaccine is, which vaccines we get, and any other information that can be gleaned from this time until that meeting relative to side effects and things like that with regard to the vaccine. Would that be appropriate? Uh, we'll have that added as an item if everybody agrees to our February uh, meeting, me meeting. Very good. Vice Chair, yes, uh, ma'am. Did we approve who who uh, approved the agenda? I, I uh, know you don't want to approve the minutes. That was Howerton and Rosenstein, but we did not approve the the agenda. Number two, I, number item number I, two. I, I will I'll move the I will move the approval of the agenda. Second. Okay. All right. We have a, a motion to approve the agenda, and we have a second. Um, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All Aye. opposed? Aye. The agenda has been approved. Okay. All right, uh, Vice Chair. Yes, ma'am. Don't forget, don't forget, this is a virtual meeting, and based on the virtual meetings, you have to call the roll, and everybody yes. has to say yes. Okay? Yes, sir. So everyone has to say yes after you call their name. Okie dokie. Okay. Um, well, Ms. Roz, I don't have everybody's okay. name, all right. and I'm not sure who all is here, so could you okay. do that for me? I certainly will. Thank you, ma'am. Vice Chair Island, uh, we're approving the agenda. Just, um, Dr. Harrod, Dr. J uh, Jim? Yes. Dr. Rosemary? Yes. Josh? Yes. Dr. McDougall? Yes. Ms. Vicki? Yes. Commissioner Howerton? Yes. Mr. Spence? Yes. Dr. Rosenstein? Yes. And Dr. Braceworth? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Keep me straight, Ms. Ross. Well, I'm trying to make sure we stay straight uh, for our turn to get us. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay. Um, item number four, um, public comments. Do we have any public comments, Ms. Ross? No, sir. Thank you. Um, item five, staff and program recognitions. Mr. Vice Chair, I have uh, quite a few. Uh, if you don't mind, I definitely want to be able to uh, extend some recognitions. Help yourself, sir. The Department of Public Health uh, extends a warm congratulations to Chair Brenda Howerton, the new chair of the Durham County Department, uh, Durham County Board of County Commissioners. Uh, we, we certainly uh, appreciate her leadership and all that she's done here on the Board of Health, but she uh, most certainly is gonna be stepping into some, uh, some bigger shoes as the chair for the entire commission. And um, it has been a pleasure to work with her. Um, I do believe, uh, Chair Howerton, I've been on every Board of County Commissioner uh, meeting since the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, so so. I've, I've gotten to know the commissioners extremely well, and uh, <laughs> it's been a pleasure working with you. We just wanted to 
extend a congratulation not only to you, but also to Commissioner uh, Burns and Commissioner Alam. And uh, in our 139 year history, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first time ever that there's been an all female Board of County Commissioners in Durham County. Yes, yes, thank you so much. And the only second time in all those years that there has been a woman of color as the chair of the board. And that hundred, that's a long, that's a lot of years. Yeah. Yes. Who was the first? Uh, Mary Ann Black. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So thank again, you. So again, we we uh, we certainly wish you well as you uh, continue to tackle the, the different issues that are coming up in Durham County. Thank um, you. As far as staff recognition, um, we want to uh, recognize uh, our newest addition to our leadership team. It is uh, Ms. Business uh, Marissa Mortaboy. She has been promoted to our Population Health Division Director. And um, that is a new division that has been created with the responsibilities of accreditation, strategic planning, quality improvement, and also integrating technology in our public health service delivery. If uh, Marissa is on the line and she'd like to say anything, we'd definitely like for her to be recognized. Yes, uh, thank you, Rod, and, and thank you for the uh, opportunity. I'm really looking forward to the the new role and uh, this is an extension of the work I've been doing with the Partnership for Healthy Durham and within the health department. And so I'm looking forward to the great things we could do in the population health division. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you. And as she mentioned, uh, she had been already doing a fantastic job with, uh, as the coordinator for the Partnership for a Healthy Durham. So we certainly look forward to her bringing her ex expertise to our leadership team. Next up, uh, we certainly want to recognize our Durham County Department of Public Health uh, Information Officer, Dr. Alicia Smith. Uh, in the month of November, uh, for her excellence in serving the citizens of Durham County during the pandemic, uh, through her uh, public information efforts, she was awarded the prestigious Ernie Seneca Award for Excellence in Public Service by the North Carolina Association of Government Information Officers. So Alicia's not with us, but I thought the board would want to know that she was uh, she was nominated by uh, us kind of secretly, us being uh, myself, Michelle Easterling, our nutrition division director, but the, the author of the nomination was Marissa Mortaboy. She did a fantastic job and she came out successful. So wanted to really uh, let you all know that that took place. Um, we also have a new regional tobacco manager for Region 5. That is uh, Ms. Natalie Rich. She's currently a um, health educator specializing in tobacco in our uh, health education and community transformation division. Now she will be taking her talents on the road, housed in Durham, but she'll be over the entire region, which this is Alamance, Orange, uh, Greensboro, uh, Guilford, and a few other counties. So wanted to uh, express that. And last but certainly not least, Mr. Uh, Vice Chair, I want to uh, introduce to the Board of Health our newest addition to our executive leadership team. Ms. Christian Patterson has been named uh, Deputy Public Health Director. She came aboard on October the 19th and suffice to say, she has hit the ground running due to uh, our efforts with our pandemic response. Kristen comes to us most recently as the Scotland County uh, Health Director, and uh, she does come with 20 plus years of public health experience and a variety of uh, topics to include community disease control, and also she actually served as a preparedness coordinator at one point in time. Uh, Kristen, if you'd like to address the Board of Health and allow them to warmly welcome you. Sure. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Rod, for the opportunity to speak. Thank you to the board. And um, although I'm a woman of little words, I do believe in serving um, Durham County or any county that I'm in, you know, and I am excited to be in Durham and I'm ready to work. I've been working and I thank Rod for the opportunity 
and he is he's an awesome leader. And I know that we will continue to build on what um, the success that Rod has here in Durham County. And so I just look forward to, you know, just a great year, a great um, just just greatness in Durham as a whole. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Again, uh, Vice Chair, thank you for the opportunity to uh, sing some praises to our staff who are doing marvelous things, and we just look forward to uh, greater work to come. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rod, and I um, want to say congratulations to everyone that Rod mentioned, Commissioner Howerton, Marissa Mortarboy, uh, Dr. Smith, Natalie Rich, and Christian Patterson. Uh, Y'all are just a testament to the great work that the Durham County Department of Public Health does along with the Durham County Board of Health. Thanks again. Okay. Um, item six on the agenda, administrative reports and presentations. Um, Will Sutton, FY 2020 end of the year and FY 2021 first quarter budget. Will? Good afternoon, Board of Health. Good afternoon, sir. Um, I am Will Sutton. I'm the finance administrator. I am not an expert on Zoom. I've used Microsoft Teams a lot. So <laughs> am I to share my screen and my PowerPoint with, with you guys? Is that okay? Hold on here. Fortunate to have our IS and T uh, liaison, uh, I, IT director Marcia Richardson on the line. She might be able to give you a little bit of guidance. Uh, Will? Yeah. When I click screen, when I when I click share screen, I I get host disabled participant screen sharing. Host disabled. So yeah, I believe I believe the uh, the host has to give yes has to give host, yeah that's give correct that is correct the host has to give sharing privileges so you may want to talk Rosalyn to giving him giving him the sharing privileges Uh, Rosalind is not uh, familiar with where that might, oh, I might be sharing my, I hope I'm not going to be sharing my screen. Uh, okay. I believe you would hover over his picture and then there's some dots and I think you should be able to give it to him that way. I don't see his picture. That's what I'm saying. Because he wants to share his screen, right? Not my screen. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, Marcia, so do Rosalind, to... yes. yes. So Rosalind, what you could do is you can go over in the chat mm -hmm. where it shows participants. Click on participants at the bottom. Oh, when you go to, let me know once you get to participants. I'm in the participants. And you should see where you can make him the host. My privileges look a little different than yours. My pri yeah, and I don't see where I can make him the host. So Rod, is it possible to carry on with the report without his presentation? I would say, or? yeah. Um, I think suffice to say, everyone has um, received the links uh, in your package. 
and um, should be able to kind of click on the hyperlinks and then Will should be able to go through uh, the financials. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Thank you. Is everybody able to do that? Yep. Very good. So first Real, it's all yours. Okay, first I'm gonna start with um, the report that's going over fiscal year in 2020. And next I'll go to the report dealing with the first quarter of 21, 2021. So again, first I'm gonna go through fiscal year in 2020. So on page two of the report is basically just giving you a general overview of the entire budget for FY 2020, where it started in the original approved column and where it ended um, in the current column. What I wanted to show on this particular uh, spreadsheet is true the total, the total amount of the budget, but I also like to point out on this particular um, slide, how much the county is funding public health budget. So as you can see from this spreadsheet here, we're about that 74.3% original and 74.2% uh, regarding the current end of your budget. So again, of the total budget for public health, 74% of that is pretty much county funding and the other 20, 26 from external funding sources, grants, fees, revenues, et cetera. I always like to, I always just like to show what percent the county is funding to the budget. And again, this is FY20, because when we get to FY21, you're going to see a little shift. On page three, I list each managing for results program, their current budget and their expenditures. So this is just showing the expenditures broken down by each managing for results program. There's allied health, dental, environmental health, health education and community transformation, leadership and business management, medical services, nutrition services, and population health. And this is just showing the percent of their use of their uh, expenditure budget by comparing the current budget and the expenditures for the year. Overall, overall for the entire department, our, our usage was at 91%. And on the next screen, I break down the actual operating and personnel expenditures just to show you what the makeup of our actual budget was. So as you can see on page four, personnel costs made up 63% of our budget in FY20 and operating costs made up 37%. Again, 63 personnel, 37% operating. So the bulk, as you can see, is operating. I mean, excuse me, personnel, personnel, sorry. Wow. Someone have a question? Okay, moving on page, slide number five is showing the revenues for the entire public health budget broken down by managing for results program. And this is excluding Medicaid cost of excluding Medicaid cost of so as you can see, overall, total revenue collected in FY20 was 81%. And I like to uh, mention that the cost settlement that we received is excluded from these numbers. Historically, our cost settlement, well, only a small portion of cost settlement is budgeted. However, in FY20, Current fiscal year, we are now being required to budget our cost settlement. So, but for this slide, I excluded the cost settlement just to give you an idea of our 
revenue collection per each managing for results program. And well, well, I have yeah. a question. Yes, go ahead. So, if it's in parentheses, is that what does that mean? Well, these are revenues, so they're just credits. The credits? Yes. It's not, it's not meaning negative per se, but just because these are revenues as opposed to expenditures, there are credits in the system. So I didn't change the number from positive, but they, they're credits in the system. I just transferred them over so that they show just as they are entered in the system as credits. I still don't understand. I, I, I'm still not understanding why is it. So you had a budget of uh, the budget is one thing, and then you only received like the 118. That's how Correct. much revenue you received. Correct. Okay. All Correct. right. Just, just to be clear. All right. Thanks. And just to point out a couple of things that stand out, leadership and business management, they had a 50% revenue collection. The reason for that is in FY20, before the end of FY20, there was a, a pretty much a large COVID grant that was received that we did not spend any in FY20. We actually were allowed to transfer that over to 21, so it was spent. In 21. So that's why you would see leadership and business management at a 50% collection. And nutrition services, just want to point that out, that's at a 53% collection. That's a result of the dying grant, the dying grant in, 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 in nutrition. So just giving you an overall look at total revenues for FY20 for managing for results program. Very good. Moving on to the next slide it is number six. This just gives you a, a visual of total revenues as they're broken down by category. As you can see, the bulk of The bulk of that $5,821,468, the bulk of it was grants. A little over $3.5 million were Medicaid coming behind, uh, behind grants at $1,913,661. And of course, this excludes Medicaid cost settlement. And the reason, another reason why I'm excluding Medicaid cost settlement is because in this particular year, um, the total amount of cost settlement that we did receive, I have it here on one of these slides. It, it was about 2.3 million. So I didn't want that to skew the Medicaid numbers. So I excluded the Medicaid cost settlement. And as you can see on this side also fees, a little over 393,000. Insurances, you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, insurance company payments, not quite 11,000, 10,929 dollars. Small amount of donations that was received and that's pretty much it. Slide number seven. Just gives you a comparison, of, a three-year comparison of grant revenue from 2018 to 2020. 2018, a little over 3.8 million. Same thing with 2019. Small dip in 2020, 3.5 million. So that's just a, a visual of grant revenue for the last three years. Well, do you know what, what's, what's the reason for the um, fairly significant dip in 2020 for this year? That 358,000 
I, I did a little digging and we have a triple P grant that there was about $99,000 that was left on the table for that particular grant that was not received. And also um, the dying grant is making up a, a, a big portion of that decrease from, okay. from fiscal year 2019. And the triple P was the uh, payment protection program? Triple P is the pa positive parenting program. Okay, see, all kind of triple P's, okay. And um, yeah, that's, that's one of our, um, one of our, one of our larger grants that we get through the state triple P positive parenting program. Moving on to slide number eight, it's visual representation, visual, visual representation of our Medicaid revenue for 2017, 18, and 19. Matter of fact, I believe these years are off. It should be the last three years, 2018, 19, and 20. So you have to forgive me for that. That should be 2018, 19, and 20. That was slide number eight. So slide number nine is just showing our self-pay fees. Same thing, the years are actually 2018, 19, and 20. And if everyone recall, you know, COVID hit us pretty good starting in February, uh, March, along with, along with uh, our malware incident. So our services were down a little bit, um, but that definitely had an impact on our, our revenue, particularly our uh, Any questions with FY? winning numbers as far as where we ended for the fiscal year. Now I'll move on to the first quarter of FY 2021 that we're in now. Do you, um, well, can you uh, tell us what kind of impact these dips are having? Well, regarding our revenue, the self-pay revenue and the grant, you know, it's the reduction, well, the reduction in services and are scaling back by appointment only and sometimes even clinics that are closed, it's a, a, a direct impact on the amount of, one, the self-pay fees and the amount of grant revenue that we receive. Um, I don't know if I can, you know, kind of give you an idea or quantify it a little more than what the numbers are saying. Um, I guess, I guess, my question has to do with service. Is it how, what kind of impact is it having on service, on serving people? Madam Chair, uh, not much, not much of an impact in that um, we continue to be forward facing throughout the pandemic. Um, to this day, we did have some significant issues as it related to the malware attack because that rendered the entire enterprise uh, useless, if you will. Um, however, um, we did find a way to kind of still provide services kind of going back to antiquated ways like with paper and everything. But um, we, we intended to uh, continue to provide services, but as Will said, we ended up having to, um, we ended up having to kind of convert to telehealth visits and a number of different uh, creative ways in order to continue to provide services and, and make um, make make uh, make the revenue continue to be generated. Um, of course, just like other healthcare um, organizations throughout the triangle, um, we we took a blow because of COVID. In that, you know, we just we couldn't be as forward facing, and then also mm -hmm. um, telehealth visits don't pay as much as in-person visits. So, you know, we had to kind of make some adjustments for that, but as far as to definitively answer your question, as far as the level of service and impact to the community, it's, uh, it, it's been, 
you know, no problem. People still been able to get their visits, still be able to come in and uh, uh, for services. It's just that we went to, in an, over, in an effort to protect our environment and our employees, we went to Monday through Friday, forward facing, Thursday, Friday, telehealth visits. And mm -hmm. that reduced the foot okay. traffic. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you. Mm-hmm. So now I'll go on to our first quarter FY 2021 presentation. So I'll go straight to the second slide, which shows our FY 21 budget. Total budget starting $27,698,841. And currently at the end of the first quarter, which is September, September 30th, it was $31,315,374. What I want to point out, particularly on this slide, is how, remember on the other slide where the county percent was at 70, I think it was at 74, 74%. So as a result of, well, for one thing, some budget cuts that were made for this fiscal year. The county funded portion has gone down from, you know, it normally is at 73, 74% on average. It's down to 69, 68%. I just wanted to point that out on this particular slide. Going on to slide number three, this is just showing our expenditures for the first quarter, and I'm comparing five fiscal years, FY17, first quarter of FY17 through the first, qu first quarter of FY21. Just showing um, uh, comparable quarters for these particular fiscal years. It's pretty comparable with 22% for the first quarter of FY21, where you're normally around that average. Um, from a, a rule of thumb perspective, you might want, you might expect to see about a 25% average for the first quarter being you know, one fourth way through the year. But we're averaging about that amount. And normally it picks up throughout, throughout the rest of the fiscal year. So these are expenditures. On the next one, slide number four, I show the revenues for the first quarter also for FY17 through FY21. Just want to point out that first quarter FY17, that amount included Medicaid cost settlement. So that's why we higher at 33%. If you exclude the cost settlement, that goes down to 16%. So on average, we could see about FY17, 16%, FY18, 16%, 19, 16%, FY20, 19%. There is a dip in FY21 at 13%. So I just want to point that out. And I have a little note at the bottom there. And we'll talk about this at the end of the, of the presentation about cost settlement. Uh, this is the first year that we are being required to budget all of our Medicaid cost settlement. And that amount that is budgeted is the 1.5 million. So that also is affecting why our percent collected in revenues for this first quarter is a little lower than what we normally see. We've got an extra 1.5 million in Medicaid cost settlement that's in that current budget number for FY21. So on slide number five, this is a three-year revenue comparison showing how our grants, Medicaid, and service charges are looking. Just to give you some other comparison about the, for the first quarter. Medicaid, um, the one in the middle, a little down then we would average uh, normally see. Same thing for service charges. Service charges are self-pay fees 
and our grant activity is a little down from FY20 uh, also. So just want to give you an idea of certain trends and how we're looking for the just the first quarter of FY21. And slide number six, I have a few notes and a couple of things that I want to pretty much touch on. So when we prepared our FY21 budget, you know, we did it based on the guidance that the budget department put out. We did a very good job in reallocating dollars, even making the reductions as we were asked to do. And when we submitted our FY21 budget, it was actually, um, we, we really didn't ask for any increases over the previous fiscal year. So I thought we did an excellent job in preparing our FY21 budget. Um, but as you can see, when FY21 did come, we were, uh, we were asked to uh, make some additional reductions with the first one being a little over $201,000 um, in operating. So again, we, we did really well to follow the guidance of the budget department, but then more, more reductions were required. So the 201 was 201,000 was taken out of our operating budget. And more recently, uh, another reduction in the personnel you no know, positions were froze, and there are no pay performance increases this fiscal year. So um, at some point, I believe very recently, they, when I say they, I mean the budget department, they made a reduction overall of our budget of 595000 in personnel. And so I just want to point that out how things are training. And this, this, is, this is just for the first quarter. And I think as the fiscal year goes on, the budget department is going to do some more assessments as to where we are, because we still have to look at where we're going to be or what we will need from the rest of the remaining of the fiscal year. And the last point that I want to point out is that in preparation for the FY 21-22 budget, we've already been given a budget reduction uh, exercise that we are to actually go through our budgets and come up with three different scenarios where there is a 3% reduction, a 5% reduction, and a 7% reduction overall in our budgets. So we have to go through our budgets and come up with scenarios where there are different scenarios where we're being asked to reduce um, overall 3%, 5%, and 7%. And that is something that is due early January. And it will be used, no doubt, to assess um, where what our budgets might look like for the next fiscal year, depending on how the economy looks and where we'll pretty much end up. So that's pretty much what I um, wanted to share with the, the Board of Health. Any questions regarding first quarter report? Dr. Rosenstein, I believe you're still on mute. You need to unmute. Okay. So I don't see how you can be asked to reduce the budget in the middle of this screaming pandemic. I mean, I don't know how we're supposed to reduce our physical forces, uh, our boots on the ground. I just, I, that just doesn't seem to be a very pragmatic thing to be thinking about doing in 2022. And, you know, the, with all due deference to the county commissioners, they may well ask that we do that and what they ask and what we're able to do be two different things. I, I just, I, I have grave concerns about that. Well, just keep in mind that, of course, this is an exercise 
just to come up with some different scenarios that the budget department could use to potentially address any needed reductions that may occur. Um, we, uh, you know, the budget department is aware of the nature of our business and there are certain required things and services that we have to do. And you know, they'll take that in, into consideration. Um, but as one of the larger departments within the county, we are in a much better place to look for certain areas that could be possibly reduced and not be affected as much as some smaller departments. To the members of the board, I might also add, um, we, we are facing the same economic uncertainty as the rest of the nation, particularly the rest of the region. Um, as a result of COVID-19, of course, there's not people going to Durham Bulls games and flying uh, out of RDU and just matriculating down in our restaurant scene. So it's having a major impact to our overall economics in the Triangle region. As I said to uh, Chair Howerton uh, at the onset of the meeting, I, I wish her well because there's, these are some difficult times and difficult decisions that have to be made, but make no mistake about it, public health is prepared to do our part uh, to, to contribute to the overall good of the enterprise. Uh, as Will said, we are a larger department, but I'm so proud of him and our leadership because we have always been very frugal and very prudent in our spending. Uh, so when the first cuts came in the amount of like 200,000, you know, no problem. When half a million was like taken away from our administrative budget, it was a little bit of a low, 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 low tap to the gut, but we still were able to absorb the blow a little bit better. And now these three, five and 7% cuts, um, I, I do believe that we'll be able to weather that storm as well. To uh, Dr. Rosenstein's point, I will say, um, in the, in, the, in the presence of uh, Chair Howerton that the county management and general managers have been very good to us during the pandemic. Whereas there is truly a hiring freeze, um, that's not affected us because they do understand that we need people and boots on the ground in order to fight the pandemic. And just about every position that I've asked for clearance for has been granted to me. And I'm forever grateful to uh, manager um, Davis and team for that. Um, additionally, I'd also like to mention, um, for the sake of time and to be real brief, um, there are a lot of, there's a lot of need in Durham County, and uh, there has been a lot of ass from different departments for uh, specific needs. Uh, make no mistake about it, public health has not asked for one dime. We've not asked for anything. And we've been fortunate because of good budgeting, and also because the state has uh, provided us with a a number of buckets of money that we've been able to, um, to really, really siphon and meet and deliberate on those things that are necessary. Case in point, uh, last weekend, we decontaminated the entire Health and Human Services building and also the Senior Living Center on public health dime. And um, we'll continue to do those things because it's uh, protections against COVID. So just wanted to really bring a little bit more clarity to the numbers. You know, we're, we're continuing to really pinch pennies and make sure that we do all that we can to contribute to the overall enterprise's uh, budgetary needs. But uh, we've, been, uh, we've been blessed to be able to continue to be in a good position to fight the good fight. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or suggestions? Hearing none, we'll move on to item number seven, the board's response and questions regarding um, the public health vacancy report, the public health NOV report, and the health director's report. Do I hear any comments or questions with regard to those three reports? Hearing none, we'll move on to item number eight, Committee reports. First off, the nomination committee recommendations. Dr. Braithwaite. Thank you. Thank you. Our committee 
currently consist of myself along with Spence Curtis and Jim Miller. Um, and we appreciate that um, Stephen, who is our current chair, is in his final year of service um, for the board and we definitely appreciate his service and contributions to the board. But since he is uh, no longer on the board, we're going to be nominating both a new chair and vice chair. And we met virtually via email correspondence and um, are recommending nomination of Mr. Eric Ireland for the chair position and uh, for vice chair, Dr. Rosemary Jackson. And we did speak to um, virtually each of them and they are willing to accept the nominations. Very good. Um, recommendations from committee require uh, a vote or are they? Um, You're gonna turn. So those, those would be the recommendations. Yes, I do accept. And then um, uh, go ahead, attorney, uh, what else if you want to. You can call me attorney doctor. I like that too. <laughs> 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 I didn't hear, hear anything. What? what? I, I thought you were going to call My me. My internet is going doctor. in and out. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so those are just the recommendations, and then they would have to be a, a formal. Uh, nomination process. I don't know if you're going to do that at this meeting or at some further meeting, some later meeting. Okay, very good. So hearing that, um, the chair is open to nominations for the position of vice chair for the um, Board of Health. Was that this nomination was Dr. Jackson? I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> okay. Very good. That is our re recommendation is Dr. Jackson Very for good. vice chair. <laughs> so all who approve of Dr. Jackson as vice chair, please yes, was respond. There, was, there, was there a motion? You, you have to I, have, you need, you need I to have was, a I had my microphone on, I was, I made the motion to, but you didn't hear it. I made the motion for Rosemary to be vice chair. Second. Thank you. Um, it's been moved and seconded that Dr. Rosemary Jackson be um, the vice chair for the Durham County Board of Health for the forthcoming year. Um, all those are approved. Remember, you got to do the voice vote, uh, Mr. Vice Chair. Oh, that's right. Ms. Ross, can you help me out with the voice vote? Yes, sir. Thank you. Dr. Miller? Yes. Josh? Yes. Dr. McDougal? Yes. Dr. McDougal? <clears throat> yes, I agree. Ms. Ms. Vicki? Yes, I agree. Commissioner Howerton? Yes. Mrs. Ms. We didn't, hear, we didn't hear. We didn't hear all of it, Rosalyn. There's internet uh, problems here. Um, yeah. Dr. Rosenstein. Yes. And Dr. Braceworth. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Done. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Well, it sounded like a unanimous <laughs> vote to me <laughs> for Dr. Jackson as vice chair for uh, for next for next year. Uh, 
Congratulations, Dr. Jackson. And thank you very thank much you very for being much. willing to serve in the position. We thank greatly you. appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate the confidence. Very good. The um, floor is open for nominations for the position of chairman for the Durham County Board of Health. Thank you. The nominating committee would not like to nominate or recommend uh, Mr. Eric Ireland for chair. So, so an individual will need to actually make that uh, make that motion. So I I make I move that Eric Ireland the chair for the the Board of Health. Um, and with that nomination, we closed on the said name. Second. Roll call vote, please. <laughs> All right, are we ready to vote? Yep. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Dr. Ha uh, excuse me, I'm getting confused now. Uh, Dr. Rosemary? Yes. Uh, Dr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Josh? Yes. Josh, you're mute. mute. Yes. Dr. McDougal? Yes. Dr. McDougal? Affirmative. Commissioner Howerton? Yes. Dr. Rosenstein? Yes. And Dr. Braceworth? Yes. All right. Raj, you didn't call me. This is Spence, and I say yes. This is Vicky, you, but I, and I, I say yes. And okay, thank you. Thank internet, you all very much. Our internet connection is really bad right now. Okay, we we'll try to move things along. Congratulations, so, uh, Eric. Thank you. I appreciate the confidence. Congratulations. All right, moving right along. The report from the finance committee, or the, excuse me, the appointment of the finance committee. Um, Ms. Ross, how many members of the board are you usually serve on the finance committee? And is the chair an ex officio of that committee? Uh, yes, sir. Vice chair would be the Three more members, and then you would be ex officio. Very good. Okay. Would anyone um, like to serve, volunteer to serve on the finance committee? This is Jim Miller. I'm available. Thank you, Jim. Anyone else? This is Josh Brown. I'm available. Thank you, Josh. And one more, right, Ms. Ross? I, I can do it, Eric. Thank, thank you, Spence. And Dr. Jackson would chair, is my understanding. And that'd be ex officio. Very good. I didn't get the last person. Who was the last person? Spence Curtis. I'm assuming Dr. Jackson, you'd want to call a meeting of your finance committee, maybe, what do you think Rod, sometime prior to the February meeting? Or should we wait? And, uh, and is there other information that we are due to to glean during that time? 
but with February, sometime before the February meeting suffice for the finance committee meeting? So most or, should we, or should we wait until after the February meeting? February uh, board meeting, but um, we need to talk with I didn't get all of that, Ross. I said the board, the finance committee. But I'm not sure about our timeline, so we need to check. So what you're saying is we really, yeah, we really need to wait and uh, receive more guidance from Will relative to budget development. Rod, is that? That's correct. Um, okay. We just need to make sure that, um, you know, again, we, we have the uh, projections. And one thing I neglected to say is that um, they're really going to look at the month of January to determine which direction they need to go with those uh, projected um, cuts that they recommended. So I would just say probably um, hold off for the time hold being. Up. Very good. Very good. And we should receive something from Will or you um, as it's available. Absolutely. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is old business. Is there any old business that needs to be discussed? Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, uh, we do have uh, a budget amendment and um, it is uh, for some, ex uh, some funds that we received from the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services for flu vaccinations and flu vaccines in the amount of 46,000, I'm sorry, $43,657 even. And uh, we certainly recommend the uh, Board of Health's approval. Okay, is that the same budget amendment that's under new business for tonight? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I apologize. You said old that's business, right. yeah, that's under that's new right. business. I apologize, right. I jumped the gun. Nope, not a problem. Um, hearing the old business, we can go right ahead and entertain that under new business on the agenda. I'd like to make a motion to accept that amendment. Second. Um, it's been moved and properly second to accept, to accept the four stated budget amendment. Um, roll call vote on this necessary. Ms. Ross? Dr. Harris? Uh, Can we just I go guess, around the square? I, I, I'll, give it a go. I'll give it a go. Uh, Dr. Rosenstein? Yes. Uh, uh, Spence Curtis? Yes. Dr. Miller? Yes. Chair Howerton? Yes. Dr. Rosenstein? You're, yes, again. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Ortos? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yes. I'm the guy that Trump Victor was talking Orto, about. Yes. <laughs> Josh Brown? Yes. Dr. Breitwake? Yes. Vice Chair Ireland? Yes. I, Dr. Jackson? Yes. <laughs> I think that's unanimous. Oh, sorry, Dr. McDougal. Dr. McDougal. Yes, yes. All right, we good. All right, thank you. Thank Not you. as easy as it looks. No. I know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Rod. Um, the next item is agenda items for February 21st. I think we already have one, and that's the discussion about the Board of Health and, vaccine, um, and vaccines. Um, do we have any other items with which we need to discuss at the February meeting? I would like to elaborate a little bit, if I can, on the vaccination discussion. This might mm -hmm. be a part of it already, but um, I received um, an expression of concern from Tricia Howard, who is one of our DPS nurses, who said that there is a reduction in the number of children who are actually getting vaccinated, especially for the vaccines that are required before high school graduation that weren't previously part of the requirement. And that's the meningitis B vaccine. So I'm hopeful that we'll add, add that as part of our discussion. 
is how to vaccinate children, especially for those required by schools. Very good. We can certainly do that. Anything else? In, in the informal part of the discussion, my wife just informed me about 10 minutes ago was on the news that the Pfizer drug has been approved by the FDA. Very good. Yay. Yay. Okay. Any mm. more informal discussion at this time? Have we had any recent talks about food insecurity? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Rod, do you re recall any? Internally, we've had lots of discussion, and uh, uh, Dr. Braithwaite, we would love to have uh, members of our team, our food and security team with the Emergency Operations Center to provide an update. Um, that includes, um, you know, Kelly Warnock, for nutrition, uh, Michelle Easterling, who's on the line, and uh, Donna Rewalt, who's our cooperative extension director, and many, many others. So I'm, I'm more than sure they'd be happy to give an update. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Anything else? At this time, I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn into closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-381-11A and 3 to discuss the health director's performance evaluation. So moved. Second. It has been moved and seconded for the board to move into adjourn and move into closed session. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. I'm getting, yes. I'm getting, uh, please bear with me. My internet band is saying it is low. Okay. Um, we got to do the voice. Right. Right. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? What were you saying, Attorney Wardell? We can hear you. Okay, I was trying to see if Roz could hear me with regard to the closed session. Attorney Wardell, you break it in and out. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay, I'll just I'll just hang on. Go. go.